So, welcome to our online yoga practice. Um, just take a moment to settle yourself into a seat, wherever you might be. And maybe you want to think about raising yourself a little bit higher, if possible. And ensuring that you can sit with ease, long and stable back. Sending the attention when you arrive here down to the contact you're making with the floor. The experience of contact, earth. And just traveling up the spine. Watching your breath as you go. Spending a few moments longer just feeling the movement of your breath, where it's touching in the body. Let your eye become open to the new experiences of your breath. Reaching the arms out to the side, just touch the fingers to the floor again, reminding yourself of this contact. As you take a deep inhale, raise the arms up high, fingers crossed, and stretching the arms through. Perhaps opening the eyes now, trying to elongate between your seat and your hands. Elongating without bringing stress into the heart space or the breath, turning to the left side. Elongating between your seat and the crown. Inhale, center. Exhaling onto the right side. Watching the breath as she moves up and down the spine. Inhale, center. Touching the left hand onto the floor, close to yourself, close to your seat. Letting the breath open onto the right side of the body, the ribs, the lungs. And giving weight into the stretch, centering, exhaling contact on the right side, inhaling into the left side of the body, dropping weight into the stretch, weight and breath, doing the most of the work, organize the weight of the body, direct the breathing, rolling the chin from the chest over to one side, Rolling the neck, rolling the skull. Taking a moment, pausing on one side. Rolling to the other, pausing, bringing the opposite elbow into the body, pulling the elbow gently back, centering, returning to the midline. Just move away from the seat. Organizing yourself into a tabletop, the hands under the shoulders, knees roughly under the hips, a long back. Again, just spend a moment remembering the floor, send the attention to contact. And we'll take a moment moving through the cat cow without forcing the synchronization of your breath, just watching how that happens. Opening the front of the body, opening the back of the body. Keep it moving. Keep it simple. Keep it uncomplicated. Remembering the floor. Fluid motion of the spine. 
And let's sit back in the child's pose, balasana, stretching the toes, stretching the arms, raising the fingers maybe to give a little bit more weight, experience of the weight of the chest, of the skull. Sending weight into the pelvis. And coming again back into the tabletop, tucking the toes, just release the knees from the floor for a moment. Just do exactly what is needed to release the knees. And not more. And then push from the hands, moving into your first down dock. Moving through the knees, bending left and right. Moving through the pelvis. And then stabilizing into a quiet down dog. Accepting the position, accepting the body, its structure for now and moving to the breath. Keeping the breath moving and perhaps directing your breath down into the pelvis as you inhale, exhaling, making the journey up towards the crown. Stepping forward then to the hands, folding into Uttanasana. Organize the weight first. First part of the asana is organization of your weight. Feel the floor, how you disperse the weight over your feet, how the pelvis sits over your feet. Relaxing into the crown. And we're beginning the journey up towards standing Urdhvahastasana. Inhale as you turn your gaze. And we'll arrive in Tadasana, standing mountain pose. Kind of awakeness as we inhale, reaching up, exhaling, folding Uttanasana. Inhaling, elongating the spine, Ardha Uttanasana. Folding in to the end of your breath, exhale. Place the hand, step back, down dog. Spending the knees as you inhale, exhale, push through the hands, arriving into a stable form. Setting the knees to the mat, sitting back through child's pose to pull yourself onto the floor. Stretching through the legs, rooting through the backs of the feet and the pubic bone. Let the inhale just raise you into a small cobra. Lightening the hands, lightening the shoulders. Sending an idea of lightness to the hands, shoulders, heart region. Stretching through the lower body. Opening into the spaces around the heart with the breath and release into the mat for a moment. Relax the work, relax your belly, and then when we're ready, move back again into down dog. Set the right leg forward, left knee to the mat, stretch the toes if that's comfortable. Reaching up for Anjani Asana. Organizing your arms and your gaze how it suits you. Turning then towards the right side, placing the elbow just above the knee, keeping the heart high, back long. And get Anjali Mudra in the twisted form. Fingertips to the mat, stretch the back leg, exhale to your center and step both feet into down dog. Again, settle into the form. Left leg forward, right knee mat, stretch the toes out. We inhale as we're reaching up. Let the inhale ground you into the body, root you into the body, into the contact with the floor. Hand in front of the heart to exhale and bring the navel gently in and tall to turn to the left side, the twisted form. The fingers can just touch the tips together in Hakini Mudra. It's perhaps easier to hold a wide space around your breathing than in Anjali. Step 
and the right leg forward, folding in Uttanasana, relaxing to the crown, Ardha Uttanasana as you inhale, exhale, fold in, remaining a moment in Uttanasana, perhaps closing the eyes, letting the exhale soften from the pelvis into the crown, rolling up, keeping an attention by your feet, and we'll arrive in Tadasana, mountain pose. Trying not to organize too much, just touching the floor with your awareness, movement of your breath, as we inhale, reaching up, and exhale, folding Uttanasana. Half form, inhale, exhale, Uttanasana. Stepping back, down dog. Again, settle into the form. Rolling into the high plank position. Organize it long. And not too deep. Try to make it, the structure, efficient. Moving perhaps through Chaturanga, if that's available to you, to up-facing dog. Hands creating length in the form. Exhaling, moving gently, slowly. Consciously to down dog. Reaching the left leg up to the sky, inhale. Bring your knee to the nose, exhale. Inhale, reaching again up to the sky, perhaps opening the hips, keep the back wide. Exhaling, knee to nose, round, high. Inhaling, stretching the left leg up to the sky. Widen behind the heart, if you like. Just test the balance, take the right hand gently to the right foot. And back to the floor. Left foot steps forward. Inhale, reaching up. Take a moment to settle into the lower part of the body before you reach the hands up to the sky. Warrior one, high lunge. Hand in front of the heart to lengthen the belly. Exhale and turning to the left side. We keep the heart high first. Try and optimize the position for a space around the breathing. This movement of the breath that reaches down into the pelvis, the lower belly as you inhale, exhaling up towards the crown. Try and find space around this journey. Optimize the asana for the breath. Turning back to Face the floor, organize the right foot so you can move it forward and keep the foot flat on the mat, turning the toes a little out towards the side. Coming into Parsvottanasana. The work is from the feet. Organize the position from the feet. Moving into the pelvis. Keeping the knees unlocked. We're going to meet again in Down Dog. One more time, rolling forward. Variations possible. Moving towards Up Dog. Length in the position, feeling the hands reaching forward with the heart. Consciously, not too fast, moving into Down Dog. The series on the right side, right leg up as you inhale, exhaling, lengthening the exhale and the movement. So we use synchronization to aid lengthening breath and movement. Third round, we reach with the right leg up to the sky, strengthening the right side of the body from hand to foot. If you want to test your balance, left hand gently strokes the floor towards the left foot. We're then going to meet in the high lunge, 
warrior one so taking a step forward with the right foot check in with the mat floor building the asana the structure the architecture up from feet to pelvis ease in the heart and the breath axis the central axis along where along which the breath is moving to turn into the twisted form you can keep a high variation for longer if you prefer the deeper variation as an option if you feel safe in the shoulders and the lower back a very a lot of strength in the left leg in the back leg into Parsvottanasana, turn the gaze to the middle and organize yourself with the left foot forward so that both legs are long but the joints are unlocked. Imagine the body is with a lot of open chambers and each joint is a door and at no time do we want to close any doors in the body. Feet, how the pelvis and the feet speak to each other. How the pelvis, the pelvic floor, and the feet speak to each other. Folding into Uttanasana. Inhale, move into the back. Exhale, creating space on the front. Take the feet together, heels and big toes. We're coming up with an inhale into Utkatasana, chair pose. Checking in perhaps first that the knees are not too far forward. And perhaps just still see the toes. Reaching up with the hands. Keep the heart soft, the breathing soft. We meet in Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhale. Taking the left leg up. Bending through the front knee to gain a little bit more support here as you stretch the left leg back. We're moving towards warrior three. Try to spend a bit more time feeling the right foot, standing foot, how that speaks to the pelvic floor. And a very strong back leg, not too deep in the heart, remembering cobra. And gently settling the left foot to the floor. Organize yourself in warrior to feet, to pelvic floor, the heart easy over the pelvis. Inhaling, just reverse simply. Exhaling, settle the right arm onto the thigh and stretch through the left side. Foot to hand. If you want to go deeper, taking the hand onto the floor. So this is a series, a sequence uh, without um, any props. You can use props if you want, but this actually, um, you don't need props to do this sequence, so you can choose the high variation for longer. Feet to pelvis, ease in the heart, the breath journeying along its axis. We're organizing for Trikonasana. Moving the left foot closer, perhaps, so we're not too long. Coming higher in the heart, I would recommend setting the right hand to the shin or to the foot. Turning down to face the mat, down dog. Organize and then settle. Move to the level of the breath purely. Knees to the floor, through child's onto the mat. Long, rooting through the backs of the feet, pelvic floor, very long pose, a lot of strength and tension along the middle line. So the hands and shoulders do not need to work. The breath reaches the heart towards the horizon, lightening the face, the tongue, 
keep it soft in all the places where the breath is touching. Perhaps stretching the arms to the back, they are still light. Strength is in the lower body. Breath moving along its axis in the upper body. And then we're going to settle into the floor. Just rest a moment. Relax the work. Relax your belly. And when you're ready, coming into down dog. Stepping forward, Uttanasana. Organize the weight of your body, dispersing it across the whole area of the feet, pelvis and feet. How are they relating? Ease in the heart. The inhale is opening into the back, and the exhale beginning in the belly, ending at the crown. Rolling up slowly. Urdhvahasasana. Tadasana. Mountain pose. Feet together. Fingers reaching down into the floor. Inhale Utkatasana. Work in the lower part of the body, ease in the breath region. Exhaling, folding, Uttanasana. The work comes from the feet. Stepping back, down dog. We're just moving through a simple flow before we go on to the other side. Through plank. High plank, chaturanga, up dog, keeping the joints open, the elbows unlocked wide across the front of the chest, keep the attention low, try not to be tempted by all the, what we call heart openings, to just come into the heart space with your attention, try to move against the obvious, move down with the attention, as you step forward, Uttanasana, spending a moment here also to quieten the breath. And we do the series on the other side. So we take the right leg up, holding the midline. So the asana is often holding the midline, as if the left and right part of the body are um, pushing in towards a sheath that divides your body, the midline, warrior three, step the right leg a little bit more back, foot to the floor, settling into warrior two, so let the asana work on you for a moment. Inhale, reverse, exhaling, just shifting the weight, but it stays centered. The feet, as if we move a part of the body a little bit more forward, we give more energy back. So it's always rotating around the central point. Going deeper, perhaps, increasing the stretch, and watch where it changes, where the breath moves, where you feel the breath touching into the binded form if it feels stable. Try to disperse the twist. So start the twist in the spine from the feet. Organizing for three kanasana. Perhaps you want to adjust the back foot, taking it a little bit closer. Come higher in the upper body. So it's again, the stability comes from the feet into the pelvis. We unlock the knees gently, keeping the legs strong and stable. And then we elongate the spine, turning, opening the front of the body. But there's still a lot of width in the back. You can almost imagine that the back is here also more important or wider. 
from Trikonasana, take the hands to the floor. We're going to turn onto the right side, so organize the feet into parallel position. It feels as if the heels are just a little bit more turned out than normal. Perhaps. And take your time, perhaps a couple of breaths, to move into the full forward fold of Prasarita Padottanasana. It's very similar work to Uttanasana. So the feet are working in relation to the pelvis. The strength is in the lower part of the body. We try to soften, give the upper body the back, the head into the position, and then we breathe along the axis. So we're organizing the asanas so that we can breathe with ease and watch the journey that the breath is making in the time that we're there. Different shapes of the body for the purpose of breathing, watching how breath, how she reacts. So then when you're ready, just step out towards one foot, perhaps taking a moment in down dog, doing what you need there. We're going to meet in child's pose, balasana, knees on the floor, perhaps the knees spread a little bit, giving the belly and the chest a bit more space to drop if it feels comfortable. Possible to take variations here where we, from the extended arm position, bend the elbows and bring the hands into the hollow of the neck, or just settling them, settling them exactly where they want to be, just where they land. So we're also stretching along the upper arms and shoulders gently. Close the eyes and child's pose if you haven't already. And accept that this is the time to give weight and nothing else. When you're ready, you can roll up into your seat. The asana is here in the seated position. So first Janushishasana, it takes in the right leg. Opening the left hip, bend the knee, set the foot in the inner part of the thigh right. I advise the foot away from the pelvic floor so we can start with a kind of neutral pelvis we can at least start here to invite neutrality along the spine. Give weight into the forward fold first. So we're not doing very much, we just give the weight to the upper body. We keep the work in the right leg as if the heel is rooting into the floor and we try to pull the foot back as if we want to collect the energy from the right leg back into the pelvis. So here's the work, the belly is gently working and then we gently give weight of the upper body and then when it feels good you can use the breath, the journey of your breath to elongate the spine and go deeper in the forward fold. Inhaling to come up and we're going to organize ourselves for Ardha Matsyendrasana. First, you can choose if you want to bring the right, the lower leg, in, into the crossed variation or keep it extended. Reaching the arms aside, inhale, keeping, raising the arms above, stretching as we did right at the beginning, elongating between the floor and the hands. We take this work into the twist, hug the knee towards the belly. We're just hugging the knee, hugging the leg, softening the inner part of the thighs and elongating between your seat and the crown. 
when you're ready, release the work. Turning back, stretching both legs out in front, just root the heels, hands behind you, and as you point the toes, flex the feet, point the toes, flex the feet, the whole body just um, shift back and forth, relaxing the belly, the seat, the middle of the body. To the other side, Janushirshasana, left leg is long, opening up the right hip, settle the foot to the inner thigh, left, a little away from the pelvis. The work is in the left leg, rooting the heel, pulling it in towards the pelvis, the belly gently long, giving weight into the forward fold. The work is not in the arms or in the shoulders, we don't pull, we don't reach, if the hands can connect behind the left foot, then maybe you want to do this. If you take the elbows away from the floor, we invite a bit more action or a little bit more active work in the center of the body to support that. Last moments here, close the eyes perhaps and just let the breath make her journey and watch. As she travels down, as she travels up towards the crown. Moving out of the pose, organizing yourself for the twist, Ardha Matsyandrasana. Reaching the arms up to the sky, elongating along the spine, while the heart and breath say stop, stay soft. Exhaling to turn into the twist, hugging the knee. But the work is along the spine, or along the axis, the breathing axis. The work is here. The attention is here. Priority is here. Between the seat and the crown. Giving space to the breath and her journey between the seat and the crown. So you can release that and then organize yourself onto the mat, lying on your back, settling the feet onto the mat, the knees tall, hands perhaps on the lower belly, closing the eyes, send the attention to the contact, earth. Hugging the knees into the chest. And then opening the position into the happy baby. floor, earth. As we spend these moments in Happy Baby, keep part of the attention on the floor. We're going to now take the right leg and place the foot in flexion just above the left knee. Let the right leg just travel a little bit away from the chest and give weight of the left leg into the stretch we hear in the lying supine pigeon pose crossing then the right leg completely over the left if you're comfortable in this variation garuda twist turning the pelvis to the left side so the knees eventually touch the floor or maybe here is a good idea to have a blanket or a prop I'm just settling a few clothes onto your knees if this is too deep then either turn the right side of the body so just turn yourself with the twist and then let the right shoulder and 
um, breast relax or take an easy variation which we're now going to do on the right side so first a moment in the supine pigeon pose keeping the back long giving priority to contact floor softness in the heart softening the front of the body and letting the stretch happen at the same time organize the body into the asana and let the asana then do its work as we pay attention to contact softening the front of the body so we come out of the pose so another variation for the twist might be just to keep the knees then together shift the pelvis a little to the left side and drop the knees onto the right if this is also a little too much it's more than possible to take the right arm onto the side of the body and just roll with as if you're sleeping on your side and then from this position gently open the left shoulder the left breast turning the gaze up to the sky and soften relax into a gently gentle opening of the chest turning back to the mat centering here just stretch the legs up to the sky for a moment with the pelvis still on the floor we're not higher than the heart but still we have the legs inverted it might just be really comfortable for you to do that if you want to move towards the half candle pose here now if we are doing the practice without props um, I would recommend this if you're very comfortable and very safe in the neck or if you trust what is happening there you can move to the full candle pose of course or in this moment uh, the headstand if that is part of your trusted practice after a few moments here in our inversion lower the legs and relax into the shavasana position allowing your body to be wide exhaling into the heart space softening the face the tongue closing the eyes contact earth just paying a bit of attention to the space in front of the nose the next two or three exhales and then letting also that go Shavasana Take a deep inhale, gently bringing a bit of movement into fingers and the toes. Take your time to move out of Shavasana. Perhaps you want to take a moment lying on one side, rolling onto your side first.
and in your own time then come back to your seat and organize yourself here like we did in the beginning returning to the place where we left the place where we began you are still close With no goal here, nothing specific, just sit in silence with the last moments. And then maybe you want to choose for yourself how to end your practice with the time to close your practice with a wish or an intention. That's uh, what you like. Or offering the practice to something, someone, or something greater, if that's what you like. Or just simply ending it in an easy way, transitioning from now to what comes next. So, namaste. And wish you all. Well. Have a good day and till the next time.